All right, so so far we've seen two approaches to sketching for graphic symbols or logos. The first was a central symmetrical approach, where you try to contain your object in, in a fairly symmetrical shape. Doesn't mean it needs to be perfect symmetry. You know, this side of the apple is different than that side of the apple, but the main intention is the eye just jumps in, takes it all in, jumps out. That's central symmetrical. The next approach is dynamic. So this one is not dynamic because it's using the horizontals and verticals, but as soon as you tilt it, because diagonals are so much more effective, it becomes dynamic. And then the final approach is to play with the positive and negative space. So we want that theme, our embattled earth. I'll fill this up with white. So to play with positive and negative space, it means you realize that not just the black shapes that you cut out for your for your design that's not the only thing that's communicating but also the white shapes that are defined by your black shapes are what it are what are communicating so for instance let's take a star right so a star is a very 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 simple very common, actually not that simple, but a very common central symmetrical kind of graphic symbol. Now you can make that star by outlining it, but that's not going to be a very versatile, scalable way to make that image. So you can make the star by just filling it in with black, right? And that's what the U.S. Army symbol is. Or you can take the star and you can actually create it by defining its negative spaces. So what if I took arrows again, just to use kind of a viscom favorite, maybe arrows of different sizes. Maybe arrows of different orientations. like so. And then I fill in those arrows with, with the black, right? So the problem with sketching for, for logos and graphic symbols is that when we sketch, we, we rely on lines a lot to define edges. But ultimately, when we create this in Illustrator, we need to create it as shapes that are nice and clean and have a distinct edge. So by playing with positive and negative space, you get to define almost two shapes, you know, and two points of, of reference. So when you look at this, you see the arrows, but then if you look closer, you see the star. And it's just like that arrow in the FedEx logo. Now notice when we're using space and we're using shapes in such a um, controlled way with such a clear intention to communicate clearly and simply in, in, in a way that's very versatile, all the little, little measurements matter. So right now this isn't communicating as well as if I can move this shape a little bit to help that star feel more balanced, right? And this is why digital art is a really good fit for graphic design and symbols. And Illustrator is going to be a program that allows us to make all these tiny adjustments. It's really designed for that. Okay, so this final approach, it's a play between the positive and the negative. So 
that's our third approach. So to be fully, fully prepared to make your graphic symbol in Illustrator, it's good to just sketch out and have to think about these three approaches in regards to your idea. So playing with positive negative space or making it dynamic, that's approach number two, or just making it central and symmetrical, that's approach number one. And you can combine them, right? You can have something that is playing with positive and negative space, but is still central and symmetrical. I think this one is pretty much central and symmetrical, but plays with positive and negative space. But what happens if I get rid of all the horizontals and verticals and really play up the movement of it? What happens if I tilt it? Then it becomes more dynamic because our eye takes it in movement. All right, so with those in mind, I'm going to continue my demonstration. So my sketch is this. I'll open it up in Photoshop. But I need to do a little bit more work on this sketch. Because your first sketch is never everything you need. That's why I always say try to do at least five thumbnails, right? So next to this sketch, doesn't matter how sloppy it is. I'm going to try three different approaches of it. And that will help inform how I actually cut it out of shapes. And I'm going to make these really loose. You'll see. Uh, let's go for 14. All right. So my first approach might, might be central and symmetrical. And I'll take that globe, right? And it's going to be spinning, but not on an angle. It'll just be horizontal and vertical, kind of like I have sketched here. And then I'll have the finger and the hand, but maybe I want the hand to be not so lifelike. Maybe I want it to be more symbolic and more like a square, right? And then maybe the thumb's coming across at a 90 degree angle, right? This kind of feels more central and symmetrical. The earth spinning on a finger. And how do I make it not look like a basketball logo? Well, I might add the continents in on the globe. Or I might add little um, line markers for latitude and longitude. That's central symmetrical. Approach number one. Cliched, yes. Good for uh, an icon on a phone, yes. Right. Does it scale well? Yes, not as outlines, but probably as a filled in black hand with white outlines, right? That will work really well. Two, dynamic. How can I make this as dynamic as possible? The same concept. I'm gonna tilt everything. I'm gonna take the globe, even though the globe is a circle, which is the most symmetrical shape, I'm gonna tilt its rotating lines and give it a little bit of anxiety on the edges, right? Because that's something I think is going to be important for this idea. And then for the hand, like I might have it tilting off of a hand, like it just fell off the finger. It's all about movement. And the thumb will be at an angle now instead of straight across. And it'll be like, oops, right? So that feels like a more dynamic approach, and I want the eye to go through it like this. And how can I improve that? Well, the only horizontal I have is the bottom of the thumb, and I don't need that. So I'm even going to tilt that down, right? So that might be a better approach if I'm going for dynamic. What about playing with positive and negative space? Well, what if I had the finger... 
Hold on. Catch up. The finger of the hand actually interrupts the circle of the globe. So here's the globe. Maybe it has some shapes of continents on it. La da 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 da. This is all filled in with black. And the hand here, whether I want it dynamic with some diagonals and curves, or whether I want it central and symmetrical. La da da. Right, it's going to be kind of giving the planet the finger, right? And by forcing that positive and negative relationship between them, where the actual outside shape is changed by the the white hand, it will be the white man's giving its finger to the earth, right? That might be an approach. But then I might decide, well, I need to add a little bit more focus to make sure people notice that by putting some magnificence around it. And then it actually might look like a light bulb. And th there might be some interesting ideas there, right? So just playing with those different approaches, it helps me understand what kind of choices to make with this. Because it's just a straight line drawing. It works as an illustration, but doesn't work as a graphic symbol yet. So what I'm thinking is that I need to, to take the ideas that work best. I want the globe to be basically the dark shape mostly black with some um, latitude and longitude marker lines cutting across it with white. And then I want the outside shapes around it to give it some movement, but to be mostly central and symmetrical, right? And I want the hand to be a very thick, thick outline where it's just kind of teetering on it, but it's mostly filled in with empty space which would be the color or whatever the, whatever the paper is behind it. And what's tough is the proportion between the two. But I also want the hand to feel like it's a little teetering and unsure. So it makes these two opposing forces, right? One that's a white shape, one that's a black shape. So that they're not an equal unit, they're two things impacting each other. And I'm going to try to get this to work as a symbol without the text. And then I think the text will be a nice, a nice solution for grounding it and making it all work as kind of filling the space for the eye. All right. So if that's my plan, now let's get with the compositing. So I'm going to make a new layer here. Let me give myself a, a nice big square. I'm going to fill it with white. Now this is just sketching, and I'm doing this all in Photoshop. Because it's always good to work from a sketch when you go into Illustrator. And what I'm going to do is actually composite. Because there's things I really liked about these two source, sources. But it's not as simple as the cartoon jumble, like turning everything into an outline and just layering it on top of itself. Especially when my computer is going so slow. But what I can appreciate is the confidence of the line quality. How the lines are starting to read not as lines, but as shapes. And that's important. Ooh, hold on. I think I'm going to have to restart before the next video. My computer didn't uh, sleep enough during spring break. To be fully refreshed. All right, so when I put these together, I'm going to try to accomplish that. And I'll show you just some of the simple uh, tools we have in Photoshop to help you get an idea of what you want. Yeah, of course. Do you think you have to 
So you don't have to. Uh, 